Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday and my full review of the new Horus Heresy Legion Astartes Age of Darkness Army List book. Now it's not to be confused with this book, the Legion Astartes Crusade Army List book, it pretty much replaces it. Now this book came out in 2014 and this 2016 quite recently but it completely overrides that book. There's quite a few changes which I'll go through as we go through the book. It also shouldn't be confused with this book, which is the Legion of Starties Age of Darkness Legion's book. They've both got Age of Darkness in the title, but the army list is literally the army list for all legions in the Horus Heresy uh, universe. And the Age of Darkness Legion's book contains all the specific legion rules and all the primarchs. Uh, that book came out a few months ago. Also not to be confused with either the Imperialis Crusade book, which came out quite recently, which contains all the Imperial Guard, Astra Militarum and things, nor the Mechanicum Tagmata. If you want all your Titans and your Knights and your Mechanicum, uh, like your Castellax and your Thanatar, things like that, obviously get that book. Finally, it's not to be confused with these Horus Heresy books. Um, they're up to book six now. Book seven, Inferno, is coming out in a few months, I would have thought. Even though it's the same sort of style in terms of quality, with the silver corners and the, the leather bound, you can actually get this book in your normal red flavour. There's a high chance that you probably will be getting it in the red flavour because they only made 500 of these. But like I said in my unboxing, you're not really missing much. All you're missing is just the actual cover itself and the corners. With the red book, you still get the silver paper, you still get the page turner. It is literally just the, the covers that are different. And on the red book, you get a lovely uh, index, which is very useful. You save yourself 10 quid if you get the red one too. So you're probably asking, well, Super, why should I get this book? Well, it pretty much compiles all of the first six Horus Heresy books, which are about £75 each or so. It combines all of those into a £32 book and it combines the Crusade army list and it upgrades the, the rules and things. So if you're starting a 30k army or a Horus Heresy Legion of Astartes army, this will be the book to get, the Age of Darkness army list. And if you're thinking about getting into it, I'd always just buy this book first, like with codexes and things. If you're thinking about an army, buy the codex of the army you're thinking about or even borrow a friend's have a look at it, look at the units. Normally they have pictures and things. These Horus Heresy books don't really have many pictures at all compared to the Games Workshop codexes. So you can't really look at some of the, the units, which was a bit of a detriment to the Mechanicum book because I like the sound of all those units. I like their points and their, their toughness and things like that. But to actually see pictures of them, I had to go on Forge World's website. And it's pretty much the same case with some of the units in here that you've never heard of before. So this book alone, is pretty much all you're gonna need if you're gonna start 30K and you wanna play battles of, of 30K. It's got all the units for Space Marines in, in here so far with updated rules and things. So at present, there's no need for you to get any of these books, any of these big books, if you don't want to. You want sort of like a watered down, minus the fluff sort of version. You can get the uh, Age of Darkness army list. And also, if you're picking a, a Legion that has a Primark model, then just use this book uh, in the company with uh, the Age of Darkness Legion's book because here you'll have your Legion specific units and your Primarchs, things like that. Right then, finally, about five minutes in, we're into the, the review of the book. So this book, lovely book. If you can only get it in the red variety, still get it in the red variety because it's an amazing book. Well worth your £32 if you're gonna spend that on the, the red version. It's got all the updated rules and units. I found it an absolute pleasure to go through. If you've already got the red book, I'll give you a list of all the changes actually as we go through them. So it starts off with the Legion Astartes Age of Darkness army list. The only sort of rules changes there is Imperial Army units in Age of Darkness games rule um, has been replaced. Instead of any unit, it's now a fixed list of units. There you go, use an additional Super Heavy, it's a fixed list of units as you can see. And a clarification of having multiple characters with the must be Warlord rule, basically you can't, only Primarchs um, can override this. Tank squadrons have command tank upgrade, which is plus 10 points of the old price. Tanks with pintle mounted options now have the multi melters um, for the same price as a Havoc launcher. So that's sort of like the, the changes. But in here, the army list, 
It talks about the 25% rule, which is purely optional. It's up to you. I think it sort of makes sense. Most of the battles, they say, are games of 2,000 points or greater. So if you're playing a 2,000 point game, the maximum sort of value of a single Lord of War is pretty much going to be 500 points can't really get an awful lot for 500 points nowadays and likewise for like a titan you're looking at 3000 points so in theory you could get a warhound titan in with 3000 point army it's actually 25% but obviously for a warlord titan that in itself is 3000 points going to be looking at a 6 7000 point army side aren't you some lovely artwork and things and then you've got all the force organization you've got the crusade force organization you've got the optional onslaught force organization chart castellan and the leviathans of war this leviathan of war it is pretty much means that you can have a Lord of War as your primary required detachment. That could be a Primarch, it could be a Titan, you name it. And this is where it pretty much ignores that 25% rule because your main part of the force is going to be your, your Lord of War. Then you've got the Allies in the Age of Darkness. Gives you pretty much most of the, the Allies that we have at the moment. So you've got your Dark Angels there and your White Scars. It's really cool because you could get a big game running. You and your mate have combined space marine legions and you've got your your sons of horus with your word bearers or you've got your ultramarines along with your imperial fists you name it then you've got space marine legion warlord traits there's six of them like normal you obviously roll a d6 you get one i won't go too much into depth with that then it starts off with your your hqs so you've got the legion praetor uh, 100 points he's sort of like the main hq that you'll you'll probably be using he's got the artificer armor master of the legion rights of war then you've got a legion centurion it's 50 points uh, a little bit of a step down and then you've got the legion consuls which were in the original book pretty much they only covered one page uh, for all of them in this you're getting six pages of consuls everything from a legion librarian console to a master of signal console, so on. You've even got a Moritat console. I think they're bringing out the, co the Moritat console soon. So I'll just go through some of the consoles. So you've got the Librarian console, the Champion console, Forge Lord, the Primus Medicae, Siegebreaker, Chaplain, the Vigilator, the Moritat, Prevarian, the Delegatus, the Herald, and that's it. So you've got all those different consoles now, which a few of them are, are new from, from before. They certainly have more special rules and things than they did. Then instead of a command squad, you, you go straight into this Damocles Command Rhino, which they didn't have before in the old book. So this is sort of new, but it's been in, in other books more recently. It's got a few separate things. It's got a geolocator beacon. They don't need to basically anything coming in deep strike doesn't need to um, scatter if they arrive within 24 inches of the Damocles. Got a command Vox Relay. You can add plus one or subtract minus one from reserve rolls. Then you've got Focus Bombardment, which is this ordnance. It's only a five inch blast, but it's an ordnance, one lance, twin link barrage, unlimited range, strength eight, AP3 weapon, which is obviously fired from um, the battle cruiser. So for 100 points to get a unlimited range ordnance is, is quite nice. It's only once per game. But then you get the other rules as well. Also carry six models if you really want to put them in there. Then you've got the Legion Command Squad, which you did have in the uh, the previous book. They're actually a little bit cheaper. They're 75 points instead of the 100 that they were. I'm not completely sure why. They've still got all the special options and the, the retinue, things like that. But it's pretty cool that they're, they're a bit cheaper now. Then we're into Elites. And you've got the Legion Veteran Tactical Squad. Oh, I think I'm boring someone. 100 points. They used to be 125, so again, they've dropped. And then veteran marines are minus three points each, obviously, um, because of that reduction in that base price. They used to be 15 points, they're now only 12. And they've also got the additional weapons um, that they had from that, that FAQ. You've got the destroyer squad, exactly the same. I see no differences there. Then you've got a terminator squad, exactly the same. I see no, no difference there. Then you've got the tech marine covenant. Tech marines are actually... 10 points cheaper than how only 35 points i mean come on do you need a better reason to get a tech marine that they now only cost you 35 points they've got this power axe servo arm artificer armor yeah they've only got one wound but 
there we go. And the Servo Automata, they can have um, heavy bolters now, multi melters, rotor cannons, power fists, lance cutters. They, it's basically more weapons than they, than they used to have in, in the old book. And then the Apothecarian detachment. Basically, what's happened with this compared to the old book is the old book they used to have a list of all the units that Apothecarians could, um, that Apothecaries could join. Instead, they've got this assigned to each one of your, your squads. If they're not in Terminator armor, then they can just you know join join pretty much any squad and they can also now purchase jump packs and space marine bikes and then they could obviously join those specific units to dreadnoughts same points but obviously they've now got their plus one attack which there was a big thing about it a month or two ago or well quite a few months ago actually where dreadnoughts throughout the whole board pretty much got an extra attack so they're now three attacks base and um, but they're still same points still got same pins things like that and the dreadnought talon then you got contemptor dreadnoughts and the rapier batteries all all the same except for now the rapier batteries except for now they can have this thing called a phosphex uh, canister shell i didn't think that they could have that before it's a 12 to 36 inch range strength 4 but it's ap3 heavy 4 barrage blast poisoned crawling fire and lingering death that's crazy but you have to have quite a few things to get that you have to have the quad launchers to start off with so that's 20 points per model and then you pretty much got to have a siege breaker console to give them this phos phosphex canister shot at, at another 20 points each basically you have to pay for the quad launchers because you don't get them straight away you you've got heavy bolters to start off with upgrade the battery to quad launcher support battery then got to have a siege breaker console to get the, the phosphex canister shot which you then have to pay another 20 points as well as obviously the cost of the siege breaker console but if you want different types of shells um you have to pay for them extra so you can get incendiary shells five points shatter and then splinter and all their rules are listed handily just there for you so a little bit of, has changed there with those and they all have to be the same type in the previous one they didn't have to be the same type from what i can see contempt of dreadnoughts mortis contempt of dreadnought basically can replace a close combat weapon with a twin linked uh, volkite culverin which before they could only have a Volkite Culverin. So that's the only big change really for Contempt of Dreadnoughts. Legion Mortis Dreadnoughts, nothing really cha has changed there. Contempt of Mortis Dreadnoughts, nothing's changed there either. They're all um, exactly the same points. Contempt of Cortis Class Dreadnought Talon, this is new. I, again, I don't know whether they've made a, a different model for it. I don't think they have because I've only seen the, the Contempt of Dreadnoughts, maybe they are bumping it up and, and making a bit of a better Contemptor Dreadnought, but at present I don't think they've got a model. There's nothing stopping you from using a normal Contemptor Dreadnought, but they've got a few things extra than a normal normal Contemptor, such as this Atomantic Overcharge, Unstable Internment, things like that. And then that's all your Elites, and we're straight into the Troops. Uh, troops Legion Tactical Squad, actually cheaper now, they're 25 points cheaper, they're still 10 points each model. Um, but that's pretty significant, 125 points for your 10 Legion Space Marines. For another 10, it's going to be another 100 points. So for 225 points now, instead of 250, you're getting your 20 Space Marines in, in one squad, if you, if you wish. Legion Assault Squads, again, they've dropped heavily in points cost. I'm actually really tempted of getting a couple of squads of these now, just having them in the chapter somewhere. They're now only 175 points. Before, they were 250 points. So crazy. Yeah, 250 points for, for 10, but now 175 for 10, much better value. And then also the additional Marines are actually a little bit less too. The 13 points instead of the 15. Then we got the Breacher Squad. They've gone down in price. They're now minus 25 points. So you can get 10 Breachers for 200 points which is great, but the additional breaches are 15 points instead of the 10. Tactical support squad, the only thing that's changed there are, and they can take additional close combat weapons for two points. Rotor cannons, Volkite charger upgrades are now free upgrades. And then a reconnaissance squad, there is minus 25 point space. So they're now 100 points instead of 125, but their cost per model is, is still the same. So for five, five for 100 points for a reconnaissance squad, Pretty, pretty decent considering they've got, got the outflank, acute senses and scout special rules. Uh, excellent. You've got the Legion Rhino Armoured Transport. Nothing's changed there. Nothing's changed with the, with the drop pod, but the Dreadnought drop pod are actually a bit more now. They're now 100 points and they were 65, so they've, they've gone up. We're into the fast attack. So we've got the Legion Seeker Squad. They're now uh, minus 20 points base, so they're 155 for five of them. 
which is pretty decent. They got the special issue ammunition. You got the Kraken, Scorpius, and Tempest bolt shells. I don't know if they do have models for the Seeker Squad. I'd like to think they have, but I'm not quite sure. Also, a note that the points per Marine has gone up to 20 points instead of 15. Then the Outrider Squad, nothing's changed there. Nothing changed with the Attack Bite Squad, still 40 points. Nothing changed with the Jet Bite Hunter Squadron. Now the Primaris Lightning Fighter, uh, still the same points, but the, the Sun Fury missiles, two Sun Fury missiles, are now 25 points. Um, and they were 15, so they've gone up by 10. But the Phosphex Bomb Cluster has gone down by 10 points. And so is the electromagnetic bomb charges. Doesn't say anything about the sonic electronic ball breakers, but I've, I've yet to find them in this book. So that's that. And then the tarantulas ooh, are actually five points more now, and they lose this forward deployment, which is pretty pretty bad. Then we've got the Dreadclaw drop pod, which is a nice sort of cheaper drop pod compared to a Caribdis. These ones have actually gone up by 15 points now, 115, they were 100. And it can only carry the, the regular Dreadnoughts and Contempt of Dreadnoughts, but not the Leviathans or the Derridios. Land Speeders, they've actually gone down by 10 points, so they're now only 40 points, which is just brilliant. Yeah, it's only got two hull points, but you can give it a Volkite Culver in, or you can give it with Plasma Cannon, Graviton Gun, so that's pretty cool. I don't know whether they make those weapons for it. You're going to have to help me out. Maybe they, maybe they do. And then we've got the Legion Storm Eagle Assault Gunship. Nothing's changed. Still 210 points. It's still in fast attack. Obviously, you can still take um, 20 models. But then, instead of the Javelin, you've got the Xiphon Pattern Intercept. So that's a, a new addition um, to sort of like the Crusade book in a way. Still looks like the same rules. It's still packing quite a lot of heat. It's got the two twin link mass cannons, and if that wasn't enough, it's also got this siphon rotary missile launcher, which is range 60, strength 8, AP2, heavy, it's two shot missile launcher, cluster warhead, terminal tracking. So, terminal tracking, jink and cover saves must be re rolled, jink and cover saves must be re rolled, and cluster warhead. Basically, if you get a penetrating hit, you roll D3 times on the vehicle damage. Um, table and select the highest results to apply so that really sort of rubs salt in the wound if you if you get a penetrating hit on on a vehicle without but pretty poor armor at 11 and only two hull points and it's 200 points it's quite a lot to invest then you've got the legion uh, javelin attack speeders they've dropped by 20 points they're now only 55 points so there's no reason why you can't get your javelin attack speeders with your twin link las cannon or the cyclone missile launcher sort of like a souped up land speeder really same ballistic skill but their their armor for the front and side is 11 um, and yeah they only have two um, hull points but i think that's a good trade-off 15 points for something with only one extra armor for side and rear but you can get some nice nice weapons for it and also there's this grav backwash um sort of special rule and yeah this grav backwash just to stay on that for a moment unless the uh, attack speed has become immobilized attackers suffer a minus two to hit an assault that's pretty good then you've got a legion jet bite sky slayer support squadron just 165 points and basically you get three legion space marine sky slayers they're all on jet bikes 165 points looks pretty cool that's quite a cool little um detachment there then death storm drop pod nothing's changed from the previous one still the same Points, cost still does the same. Then you get the heavy support squad, nothing's changed there. The Predator Strike Squadron, nothing's changed, still got that awesome Predator Cannon. Then you've got the Land Raider Battle Squadron, where the Land Raider Phobos is minus 25 points. So Phobos is 225 points, and it was 250. Uh, the Proteus is also minus 20 points, you can get Proteus for 180 points for a 14 armor all round, four hull point vehicle with your LAS cannons, pretty decent. And then the Achilles can take uh, thud gun ammunition, the same as rapiers at the same prices. So if you look here, you can also buy this Phosphex canister shop, but you still need that little Siege Master console. <laughs> I hope they do make a really nice Siege Master. I hope they make consoles for all, models for all the consoles, that would be pretty awesome. The Achilles um, can also take the different um, types of shells. Nothing's changed with the Fire Raptor though. Uh, still same point, still beautiful model and all the rest of it. And then we're on the Artillery Tank Squadron. Nothing's changed there. Still got your Basilisk, Medusa, Whirlwind. Still the same points cost. Not sure why you'd go for a Medusa over a Basilisk. Probably slightly better strength cannon, but um, you're quite close at 36 inch range, really. Then you've got the Vindicators. You can now have them as squadrons, whereas before it was just one 
Siege Vindicator, but now you can have obviously up to three in, in a squadron. And they've got the additional rules uh, as for bo Book 6. So they've got this... Um, book 6 introduced the Laser Destroyer Array, whereas... And the Laser Destroyer Array has this power capacitor fire, so basically if it doesn't move, then it can... This weapon can f fire twice, twin-linked. Uh, again, if it doesn't move, it can choose to have an overcharged volley, which is three shots twin linked, but um, on a roll of a one, it can lose a whole point of damage. But if you're firing three ordnance shots, which is basically a LAS, LAS cannon, this laser destroyer array, that might be a good trade off. Even if you lose a hull point, you've probably inflicted three hull points on that vehicle and you've probably destroyed that vehicle, taken it out of the game. Who knows? But there you go, that's the, the big change there. The Spartan, unfortunately, guys, it's gone up up in points cost it's gone up by 10 points now 305 points. it's just gone past that 300 point mark it's now 305 points which is a little bit sad but there you go however laser destroyers are now free so if you want to go for the ordnance and um, version of the last cannons it's, it won't cost you any any points now flare shield however has gone up by it's gone up by 20 points the flare shield is now 45 points and think how many models and things you can get for that whether you want that on a five hole point model up to you but if you've got all your good units and things in there because let's face it it can carry 25 models more than a storm eagle only 15 less than a thunderhawk for crying out loud and um, then yeah that flare shield might be worth it for the 45 points then you've got the sasis assault ram nothing's changed there the sakaran venator tank destroyer the only change there is that it can take a second pintle mounted weapon so you've got pintle mounted heavy bolter and then you can also have a, another following pintle mount weapons you can have a twin linked um, bolter or a heavy bolter so you could have a pintle mounted another pintle mounted heavy bolter then you could have two pintle mount mounted um, heavy bolters at the sides so you could have four heavy bolters and your uh, neutron beam laser uh, if you really want now the Sikaran, um that was 135 points, which is an absolute bargain. It's now unfortunately gone up by 30 points, now 165 points. But it can take a, a pintle mounted weapon now, so you can give it a you know, heavy bolter or whatever. So likewise, it's already got this um, heavy bolter. It could have side sponsors heavy bolter, then it could have another twin, then it could have a pintle mounted heavy bolter. So you again, you could have four heavy bolters and the accelerator auto cannon. Um, so if my maths is correct, you're looking at 18 shots um, from one tank, which is pretty insane. Looking forward, the Caribdis is now minus 25 points. I think they want to be selling a few of these. They're quite expensive models anyway. I think they're almost 200 quid, certainly 150 odd pounds. But they're 235 points and they used to be 260. Still not that bad considering it can carry 20 models or a single dreadnought of any type or a unit of rapier teams. You can get three rapiers in there if you really wanted to do that. And it's got some nice fun little rules and things such as the, the storm launcher itself and the melter ram, the heat blast and all the rest of it. And then you got another new unit um, that wasn't in the, uh, the previous book which is the Leviathan Pattern Siege Dreadnought Talon. 270 points for this bad boy. He wasn't in the previous book. He's 13 armor front, 12 rear, weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 5, strength 8. He's got 4 attacks. That's because he's got 2 Leviathan Siege Claws. If you change one of his Siege Claws to a Leviathan Storm Cannon, for instance, he'll lose that, that attack. So just bear that in mind. Nothing about those three missiles on the top. I said this in, on the unboxing. Nothing about them anywhere. We're saying that he's got frag grenades. I initially thought these these sort of lights were his frag grenades. They're not. Apparently those three things at the top are his frag grenades. However, if you look at the 40k rules, he can take three hunter killer missiles. So they must be those missiles, but for some reason they weren't activational in, in Horus Heresy. Which is still really odd to have a model like that and have them on there, but have no use for them. It really sort of sucks. But his weapons are awesome whichever weapon loadout you go for stick him in the character drop pod shoot him down on on the surface and just let him run riot or you can have him sneakily be moving around the board letting rip with this uh grab flux bombard or his leviathan storm cannon it's six shots you could have two of these puppies 12 shots of ap3 that's just going to blow huge chunks out of whole space marine squads um, if if you can get him in range, I mean he's only 24 inch range with them, so it's quite a short range little bugger. 
but if you can um, give them a good deployment method, you're going to cause some damage. The Dera... The Dera... De God, I give up. The Dera... The Dera Dio patterned Dreadnought. 185 points. He wasn't in the old book at all, at all. So that just goes to show you, I thought that Derridio model was, I thought it's old, but I didn't think it was older than two years ago. Apparently it is older than two years ago. 185 points. What changes to him from, I want to say book five, but he might be in book four, is that he can now take a third weapon option, which is this Arachnus pattern heavy las cannon battery. It sounds a lot more awesome than it actually is, or should I say, actually looks on the model. I've, I've seen what they've done. I mentioned this in the, in, the, in the unboxing. If you want just the cool factor and a lot of damage, go for this Anvilus Auto Cannon Battery with the uh, Iolus Missile Launcher, because that's just going to be incredible. But the Arachnus Heavy Last Cannon Battery, if you want to know, its uh, range is 48 inches, so same as the Auto Cannon. Strength is two more, it's strength 10. AP2, Heavy 2, Exo Shock. So Heavy 2 is not too bad. You get two Strength 10 Lance Cannon shots. Pretty good. But the Exo Shock is the thing that really sort of seals the deal. If you get a penetrating hit, roll a D6. On a roll of a 4 plus, a 50 50 chance, you get a second automatic penetrating hit on the same target. Cover saves, you can't take them. That's just incredible if you think about it. This Exo Shock sort of rule. Also, he's got this no another new tool in his arsenal called the Atomantic Pervase or Pervais, whatever. It's 50 points, quite pricey. However, this basically gives him like a mini void shield sort of shield thing. Boosts and vulnerable save to four plus against shooting attacks. For any units within three inches, so they, they've got to be hugging him, get an invulnerable save of six plus against shooting attacks. Or if they've already got an invulnerable save, it plus by one. So if you've got some terminators around him, obviously they're gonna be having a, a better save. However, you're losing that strength six AP three, three shot missile launcher that has this independent tracking thing that fire at vehicles, it, it attacks on their side armor, which is awesome too. That's a nice addition. Then we get to the Legion Whirlwind Scorpius. It can now take pintle mounted weapons, hallelujah. It's got the twin link bolter and the multi launcher, which is still absolutely nasty. AP three, 48 inch range, heavy one, the little blast, but, you can have a rocket barrage, so you get your heavy one plus D3. So you can have four of those little little blasts. Then we get to the Legion Malkador assault tank. It was in the previous book, but it was sort of mixed in amongst the Lords of War and it counted as a Lord of War. Big news, doesn't count as a Lord of War anymore. And it's also cheaper by 25 points. I'm actually quite tempted. You get 275 points, what do you get for that? Well, already it's cheaper than a Spartan. It's got more hull points, six hull points. Yes, it's got a little bit less armor, but front is still 14, 13, 12. And then you get a traverse mounted battle cannon. Okay, that's not too bad. You can change it to a twin link last cannon though. And then you can have a hull mounted demolisher cannon. So if you want, you can have a battle cannon, demolish cannon, and then you get the side sponsons. You can give it last cannons, auto cannons, heavy flamers. Then you can also give it a flare shield at less points at 35 points. And you can also give it pintle mounted weapons as well. And it's got this battle speed rule. If it moves flat out, it can still choose to fire its traverse mounted weapon. So it's quite a viable option now, the Malkador Assault Tank, uh, as just a heavy support unit with six hull points. The icing on the cake is you can have it in squadrons. So you can have one to three of these in one heavy support choice. So if that doesn't shift models, I don't know what will. We move into my favorite section, of course, the Lords of War section and we kick it all off with the Legion Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer. Nothing's changed there at all. It's still got that absolutely ridiculous feedback special rule. If it doesn't penetrate um, and then it gets a one, then it'll lose one whole point. I mean, yes, it's got six, but it's a lot of war and it's almost 400 points. Speaking of 400 points, the Typhon's gone up. The Typhon's gone up by 45 points. Can you believe it? That's so much. It's now almost 400 points. At 350, it was a good deal. At almost 400, not sure. I think they sort of realized, cry that no cover saves allowed special rule is worth a lot. And it is. There's so much cover around nowadays 
that um, to have a weapon that ignores cover and a weapon that deadly, AP1 strength 10, is, is just terrifying. So hence why they've, they've probably bumped up the price. Then you've got the Falchion, which again has gone up in price by 20 points. One of the main reasons is because it can now opt to take a neutron wave capacitor. So if you wanna make it crapper, take this, no. Um, Pretty much it adds the shot pulse and feedback special rules so the shot pulse is this it can only fire snapshots which it which is all right so you could fire this and remember the probably be worth it more against the titans and things because it's 120 inch range and it's got 12 hull points so you're not as pissed off if you lose a hull point and you get it wrong if you're firing at something that's further away, 120 inches, but also that you've got 12 hull points to play around with. You know, it's not too much of a deal if that happens. And also, if you do hit a Titan and you do penetrate and whatnot, you can get him to only fire snapshots, which would just be hilarious. And that's pretty much all the changes. I'll quickly mention the Rites of War. Orbital Assault, um, the Dreadnought and Contempt Talons can take Dread Claws or Dreadnought Drop Pods, even in Talons of two or three. And rapier batteries can take drop pods too. So they're the sort of like big changes in the in the rights of war. So then we'll just talk about the, the other units in the book. So we've got the storm blade, which nothing's changed. Then we've got the fell blade. It's good that they've sort of packed all of these big sort of main blade type tanks all together. So you've got the falchion, the storm blade, the fell blade, and then you've got the glaive, which apparently is the only legion sort of bane blade. A tank that has its actual ballistic skill four. All the others, we're just assuming that they've just got you know normal sort of imperial serfs in them, or you know tank commanders, or something like that. Just just normal humans. They haven't got space marines in because you have to spend the extra fifteen points on on them all to get their uh, space marine crew. So then you've got the glaive. Nothing changed. You've got the thunderhawk transporter, the thunderhawk gunship. Nothing's changed. But then you've got the Mastodon as a Lord of War. So you've got this guy from Book 6. So it's another new new unit. So, so far we've got the Xiphon, the Deredio, the Leviathan, the Mastodon. And we've also got the Stormbird in here. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So this bad boy, 14 all round, 10 hull points. So less than the Falchion, which is quite strange. You've got 700 points, so it's a bit more costly, but it can carry the 40 models which is only 15 models less than a, than a Spartan. So get two Spartans and then you've got your, your 50 models. But it's got some nice little rules like the reinforced shell and the Scar Siege Melter Array, which in my opinion is only useful if you're going against um, fortifications, things like that. And then you've got Sky Reaper ba Battery, which is, you know, five shots. It's, it's all right. If you've got units in it, they can have this advanced um, defensive fire so it can sort of fire with using Overwatch which is quite quite nasty with the heavy flamers on it. Then you've got the aforementioned unit, the Sokar Pattern Stormbird. I believe they'll make other patterns at some point, but it's nice to see that this is in here from book five, uh, 850 points, 14 front armor for a flyer, 13 at the, at the side, 12 for the rear, and 12 hull points. It's got a plethora of in, amazing, incredible special rules. Everything from its uh, orbital strike that it can use, it, even its macro bomb cluster, which is apocalyptic barrage AP3, dread strike missiles of strength 10, 120 inch ranges. It's got the shield projection, any units within 12 inches, which will give units, tanks, things like that, some extra protection. Then you've got the Imperial Primus Redoubt. I found out that there is actually a gaming tile for this. And it's pretty pretty decent, so go check that out on Forge World's website. Then you've got the Castellum Stronghold, which is same points and things. What we're used to, you can take the different weapon options and things for it. There's the picture that you've seen many times before. So then you've got all the Rites of War, Armoured Breakthrough, Primarch's Chosen, Brethren of Iron, and so on, that you didn't have in the, the previous book. Outcast Sons. Sort of Vanguard, things like that. Then you've got Legion specific rights of war. So it's just sort of like compacted them all in, in there rather than have, having them at the end of each Legion that they did in the, the Legion book. And then you've got Battle in the Edge of Darkness core missions. So you've got some missions at the back and some more missions there. Legion Astarte special rules. So it's got the Primarch rules and things, Legion crew. And then you've got the, the Astarte's war gear, uh, which you had in the, 
the previous book. It's just a few more pages than it than it used to be. There's, there's a few extra sort of like little weapons and things. Then you've got your sort of data sheets. Again, there's about half a page extra of, of extra weapons that, that the other book didn't have. And it's also got this really cool thing here, which the other book didn't have, which is the special rules for all of these weapons. It also highlights that the special rules for the weapons in this summary here can be found on the you know, the following pages. So that's really, really useful. The other book didn't have that, so where you'd see sort of special rules, it didn't really have a list of them, and it didn't tell you where you could sort of find them. So I think that's an excellent step in the right direction. Then it gives you some adverts and things. Before, in the last book, believe it or not, they only outlined up to book three, and that was 2014. Model-wise, they only had Angron, Ferris Manus, and Fulgrim. Now, of course, we've got Gilliman, Corvus, Horus, Perturabo, and of course there are there are others as well. And it shows up to the most recent book, book six, and it shows you these books too, such as the Mechanicum one, the Crusade Imperialis, and the Age of Darkness Legions, which shows you all the Primarchs and things, and some little bit about the, the Black Library. So there you go. Uh, another thing that it didn't have in the previous book was a little bit about the optional heavy support such as the such as a phalax cohort or a castlax um class battle automata uh, maniple which is a bit of a shame because in my head i've always thought that space marine legion could have those things and it would have been nice to see them at the back of this maybe have something to, something along the lines of the Domitar, Castlax units or the Iron Circle, something like that. I mean, I, I know that the sort of Domitar class, the Iron Circle was sort of included in the Legion book. It would have just been nice to have some sort of nod to Tech Marines or the Castlax, uh, things like that, that the that the other book did. That, that was the only other sort of missing thing. Overall, I'm really happy with this book because it combines everything in the first six books. It's got those new units, it's got your Deredio, your Xiphon, your Leviathan, your Mastodon, your Stormbird, and it's got all the, the different sort of weapons and things that go with them. Upgraded a few of the units, brought down the cost of um, some of them, such as the Assault Squad, uh, even just your normal normal squad, your Dreadnought. It bumped up the price of a few others, such as the, the Typhon, which is a bit of a shame, and the Spartans. Um, flare shield to 40 points which is bloody bloody crazy but overall really happy with the book it's nice to see a book like this that has everything in it in terms of space marine legion the next step of course is for 412 to stop making these silly 130 page books and release a proper book in a sense of 230 pages or 240 pages um, with all of these in and all of your legion specific units in with your primarchs that's what I'm next looking forward to, but I've got a feeling that that won't be in another two or three years. Um, but either way, next book they'll most likely release, in my opinion, is probably going to be book seven, Inferno, which will have, hopefully, Thousand Suns and Space Wolves in. So anyway, as for this, thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.